In this first module in arts, we will focus on the different Western classical art traditions, specifically the most famous paintings from the different art periods. This module is divided into three lessons. Lesson 1 is about ancient paintings, prehistoric era, and Egyptian. Lesson 2 is about classical paintings, Greek era, and Romantic era. And Lesson 3 is about medieval paintings, Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic. Here is the timeline of the different art periods that we are going to talk about. First is the prehistoric and Egyptian arts during 1.5 million BC to 2000 BC. BC means before Christ. Second art period is the Greek and Roman art during 2000 BC to 400 BC. And last one is the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic period during 400 BC to 1400 AD. Let's first talk about the meaning of the word art. Art is derived from the Latin word ars, which means skill. It is also known as the totality of human activities, and these are some reasons why arts is important to us humans. First, it is where some people express feelings of love. Another is, it gives satisfaction to talented people. And lastly, it develops character, proper attitudes, and values. Let's now go to the first lesson, and it is about the ancient paintings during prehistoric and Egyptian era. In the prehistoric times, their paintings were found inside the caves which may have been their way of communication with each other. It may also be for religious or ceremonial purposes. Prehistoric includes all human existence before the emergence of writing. Next is the Egyptian art. The purpose of Egyptian paintings is to make the deceased, afterlife, place pleasant. It also emphasizes the importance of life after death and the preservation of the knowledge of the past. With this in mind, themes include journey to the underworld, introducing the deceased to the gods of the underworld by their protective deities. Egyptian art is also based on perfect balance because it reflects the ideal world of the gods. Now I will show you some of the artworks from the prehistoric and Egyptian art period. First is the sarcophagus of Tutankhamen. This painting of the walls on the tomb shows events of the life of the king while he was still on earth and the scenes he expects to encounter in the underworld after his death. Next is the cave of Lascaux. The dominant features in this painting were large animals native in the region. It was discovered on September 12, 1940 and given statutory historic monument protection. The painting has nearly 2,000 figures composed mainly of animals, human figures, and abstract design. The Hall of Bulls, which is also from the Cave of Lascaux, this is a beautiful painting on cave walls found near Lascaux, France, represent the earliest surviving examples of the artistic expression of early people. Cows, bulls, horses, and deer are among the animals seen on the subterranean walls of the caves. These animals were of utmost importance to the survival of the people during this time, and their continued creation was essential. Last is the painting of Maat and Isis. The painting shows the two goddesses, Maat and Isis. Maat, the goddess of truth and justice, is the winged goddess who is kneeling. Isis is the goddess seated on the throne. This time, let's proceed to lesson 2, which are the paintings from the Greek and Romantic era. In the Greek period, Paintings were commonly found in vases, panels, and tomb. Tomb, ibig sabihin sa Tagalog, ay libingan or mga nicho. It depicts natural figures with dynamic compositions. Most of the subjects were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. 
It reveals a grasp of linear perspective and naturalist representation. Next is the Romantic period. Most of the paintings in this era were copied or imitated from Hellenic Greek paintings. Fresco technique was used in brightly colored backgrounds, division of the wall into a multiple rectangular areas, like a tic-tac-toe design, and multipoint perspective. Here are the most common methods that artists used in doing their paintings during the Greek and Romantic period. First is fresco. It is a method of painting water-based pigments on a freshly applied plaster, usually on a wall, surface. Colors are made with grind powder pigments in pure water, dry and set with a plaster to become a permanent part of the wall. It is ideal for murals, durable, and has a matte style. Here is an example of a fresco artwork from the Villa of Mysteries. This fresco painting was believed to depict ceremonial rites, either marriage or an initiation of a woman in a mystery cult. Next is called encaustic. It was developed to use by Greek shipbuilders who used the hot wax to fill the cracks of the ship. It is paint that consists of pigment mixed with beeswax and fixed with heat after its application. Next one is panel painting. These are paintings on flat panels of wood. It can either be a small, single piece or several panels joined together. Most of the panel paintings no longer exist because of its organic composition. Here is an example of a panel painting called Pizza Panel. This is the earliest known panel painting made in the Archaic period between 540 and 530 BCE. Next method is used in designing vases. The kerch style, also referred to as kerch vases, are red-figured pottery named after the place where it is found. Shapes that are commonly found in these vases are pelike, which is a wine container. Next is lecanis. This is a low bowl with two horizontal handles and a low broad foot. Next, lebes gamikos, with high handles and lid used to carry bridal bath. And last is crater, bowl used for mixing wine and water. Most common motifs were mostly scenes from the life of women, often exaggeratedly idyllic, mythological beings that were popular among the people of the Black Sea, or a scene from mythical story or event. Another method is tomb or wall painting which was very popular during the classical period. It uses the method frescoes, either tempera or water base, or encaustic using wax. It has sharp, flatly outlined style of painting, and because it uses water-based materials, very few samples survived. In tomb paintings, artists rely on the shade and hues of paint to create depth and lifelike feeling. Here is an example of a wall painting made by Paestrum in 480 BC. This is entitled Tomb of the Diver. And the last method is mosaic. It is an art process wherein an image is created using an assemblage of small pieces of colored glass stones, or other materials. This technique is used for decorative art or interior decorations. Here is an example of a mosaic art during this era. It is called Head of Alexander. The full image is a Roman floor mosaic in the House of Fun, Pompeii, dated 100 BC. The whole mosaic depicts the battle between the armies of Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia. And now the last lesson in this module is about the Byzantine, 
Romanesque, and Gothic art periods. Let's go first to the Byzantine art. The lively styles of painting, which had been invented in Greek and Rome, lived on in Byzantium, but this time for Christian subjects. By the 11th century, the Greek and Oriental styles seemed to blend in magnificent, imposing images which adorned the churches in large and small forms. Second is Romanesque art. This style first evolved in the first third of the 12th century. It is a complete realization of religious and social functions. These are largely placed mosaics on the walls of the churches that follows a strict frontal pose. The three main functions of Romanesque paintings are entertaining, moralizing, and educational. Last one is the Gothic art style. Gothic style originated in northern France. The basic characteristics of Gothic art are reinforced symbolic meanings. The church symbolizes the transcendence of the soul and the underlying philosophy to create buildings of height and light. Now here are some of the paintings from the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic era. First one is called The Shepherd David. The painting shows some realistic details and show naive naturalism. Second is called Lady in the Unicorn Tapestry. Subjects usually depicts popular legends and love stories. Patterns like mill floor or thousand flowers show influence which may have been due to the Crusades. And the last one is Christ in Majesty. This is a painting from the Church of St. Clemente in Spain. Christ wears a grayish white robe with a blue mantle. Each side of the center window are three arches resting on columns of capitals in green, red, and black in between of figures of Virgin Mary and five saints are columns with wavy line patterns going vertically. This mural painting has been moved to Barcelona and replaced by a replica. Now here are the six activities that you need to do in this arts module 1. You may answer them online in the links that I will post in our FB group or you can answer it on your answer sheet if you cannot answer it online. So again, you have two choices. If you answer online, no need to do an answer sheet. But if you cannot answer the online activities, you may just want to do an answer sheet in a piece of paper. Now I will show you activities 1 to 6. In this last activity, which is the activity 6, this is 1 to 7. You will see pictures of different artworks from all the art periods that we have discussed. And all you have to do is tell what the title of the painting is. No need to write the name of the artist that made the artwork. So that would be all for the activities in Module 1. Again, those are six activities that you can answer online or you may do in an answer sheet.